Yeah, it was everywhere. I don't think you could actually see any of the seat left. <laughs> before flying and before being cabin crew, I had the biggest fear of sick. People just don't always poo in the toilet. Take my tray. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell, we're a very different setup today. It's a sit down video, but it's not a roster reveal. And the reason being is because this week is my week off work and I didn't have any travel vlogs to bring to you guys because I'm not traveling. So today's video is going to be a get ready with me because I need to get myself ready for the day today. So I'm gonna do my makeup, my full face of, I guess my everyday makeup routine that I do when I'm at home. But at the same time, we're gonna do some story times, I think. I'm gonna spill some tea about some of the bad and the ugly things that have happened on my flights because, you know, life of cabin crew comes across glamorous, but it's definitely not the best of times. So I'm gonna spill some tea of some of the situations that I've been in on board that are not good, as well as do my makeup at the same time. So yeah, I'm looking forward to doing a bit of a different kind of video for you guys. So I will say I don't claim to be any sort of makeup expert. I do enjoy makeup and I really did enjoy it during lockdown last year when I was on furlough. I really sort of found a hobby in makeup, but I just haven't had the time to do makeup that much since flying and when I am at home I don't really want to wear makeup so it's not really been at the forefront of my mind so yeah I'm really excited to kind of get stuck in and do some makeup with you guys so my face is all prepped it's all done I'm all moisturized and ready to get straight into makeup so with my makeup I never really start with a base I always tend to start with like my eyes and my brows because especially if I'm doing like intense eyeshadows or eyeliner it's better to kind of do that first and then do your base so then if you have any fallout it doesn't go onto your foundation that you've already done so that's kind of the way I do it so the product that I use for my eyebrows is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade. I'm in the shade Taupe. This shade actually fits me really well and I've always struggled to find an eyebrow shade that suits my eyebrows without looking orange. So yeah, this one has been my go-to eyebrow product for maybe a year, year and a half now. So like I said, I have a fair few stories to share with you. I'm maybe not gonna share all of them. I'll only share a few today and maybe we can do another video in the future if you guys liked this kind of concept. So I'm gonna start with a story that I had to deal with quite early on into my flying career. And yeah, it was something that I really did not want to happen to me, but I, I knew it was going to at some point, but I did not want to be like the main person having to deal with it. So I had just done a trip and this was on the flight home back from one of my favorite places now that I've ever been to and that I haven't been to for such a long time. But yeah, this was the first time I ever actually went to this place and that is San Diego. So I just had a good two days in San Diego, had such a good time. My crew were amazing. We got on like a house on fire and yeah, we were so like busy on that trip. We did so much that by the time it got to the flight home, we were so tired. And bearing in mind, I'd only just started getting used to night flights and I was still kind of getting into the swing of things like having to stay awake all night. It just, it, yeah, it took a lot of settling in basically. It took about six months for me to actually be able to cope better with night flying. I'm just gonna quickly move on to carving my brow. So I'm just using the P. Louise base in shade, I think it's one. Yes, shade one. And then I'd use like a flat brush just to carve them out and make them look nice and neat. So we were a majority of the way through boarding this flight home. And then towards the end of boarding, this massive group of school kids came on to the plane. So they were obviously on a school trip and seating them down was a bit of a fuss anyway because they were basically sat all over the economy cabin where I was working and they were a bit funny about that because they didn't want to sit next to random strangers they wanted to all sit together and it just wasn't possible because people had already booked window seats and things and it just they it was hard to basically communicate to them you need to stay in the seat you're allocated I'm sorry a lot of them didn't speak a word of English maybe one or two words or like basic English like hello bye please thank you that's all they kind of knew and it was the teachers that knew a bit more but even then just communication was really hard so that was another barrier so yeah we had to deal with that and there was only a couple of teachers that were with them 
So them trying to manage the kids as well as us trying to help them manage the kids was just, it was just a nightmare. I don't know how they got them through the airport in the first place. So we finally got them all sat down, we took off and we served dinner. Once we served dinner, then we turned all the lights down for everyone to go to sleep, exactly like any other night flight. So on this particular flight, I was, I believe, on second break. So that basically means that in between the first dinner service and the second breakfast service that time we split into two and that's when we have our breaks so i was on the second half so as soon as we turned the lights down it was mine and a few others duties just monitor the cabin and make sure everyone was okay make sure everyone was happy and those who weren't sleeping get them drinks and things you know that's the kind of duties we do in that time once we'd done that a few times we were just chatting in the galley and this man came up to us and he looked a little bit concerned basically <laughs> so moving on to my foundation now i have been trying a new one that i bought the other day and that's a very popular foundation amongst cabin crew and i have been recommended it so much from other people who have oily skin as well because for some reason when i'm on a flight my skin does the total opposite to what it should do it should be dry but it's not my skin gets so oily like my face it's insane to the point where i have to go to the toilet every now and again and just get a tissue and just pad my face down because it's, it's ridiculous so with that in mind i wanted a foundation for when the masks go that would completely mattify my face and would last a long time without me having to powder so people recommended the estee lauder double wear and i found it in my local outlet village for 24.50 and it's normally about 35 pounds so that's a bargain so i thought i'm gonna try it and just see how it goes i've tried it a few times and it's actually really good it lasts so long without you having to powder maybe a good eight hours before you need to powder for the first time so yeah it's it's incredible actually i love it and it's really full coverage which again i love so i'm going to be putting this one on today the only thing i'll say about it is the fact that there's no real applicator for it it's just got like a lid and you just kind of have to pour it and that's just not really ideal and i don't like to use too much but because of that i end up using loads so i just need to kind of watch how much i put on today <laughs> so this man came up to us and was like um girls can i can i borrow you please and we were like yeah yeah sure so he took us aside because there was other people in the, the galley as well other passengers so he was like i need to talk to you um the girl who sat next to me um she didn't look very well so we were like okay getting our medical heads on right now so he was like yeah she's she didn't look well and she was she hasn't slept the whole flight and he said he just went to the toilet and he came back and basically she threw up all over his seat so she was sat in the middle seat of three seats and he was sat in the aisle so she's obviously then gone to throw up but didn't want to throw up on herself or on her seat so she's just naturally like gone to the left of her and just thrown up all over his seat and as soon as he said that i was like i went a bit green myself because before flying and before being cabin crew i had the biggest fear of sick it's, i'm one of those as soon as i see someone else gag or someone be sick it just instantly turns my stomach and as soon as he said that i was like okay trying to keep my cool but realizing that i'm gonna have to go and clean up some sick in about five minutes so all of the crew kind of looked at each other and were like so who wants to deal with this situation and i was like do i just kind of step back and say yeah i kind of have a fear of sick <laughs> or do i just put myself forward and be like right we need to battle with this fear because this is definitely not going to be the last time that i'm ever going to have to deal with something like this so i was like right i'm happy to go with someone else to have a look just to see how bad the situation really is because from what this passenger was saying it sounded like it was everywhere quick disclaimer i've just noticed this mark here that looks like something else that is not i basically burned my neck while i was curling my hair the other day and yeah it was very painful and i don't recommend it so me and this other crew member that i had gotten really close with on this trip were like right let's just go together let's just do it just see how bad the situation is so we walked up to his seat with the passenger that let us know and yeah it was everywhere i don't think you can actually see 
any of the seat left. <laughs> Yeah, this vomit was literally all over his seats, all over his seatbelt, all over the pillow and blanket that he had been using. Luckily, he put his bags in the locker so the sick didn't go on his bags. But yeah, did I also add that this flight was completely full too? So we had no spare seats and no spare pillows or blankets. We were a bit stuck. So moving on to concealer, the concealer I'm using is the Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer in shade C1. This one is the broken one actually that I had in my liquids bag and I decided to take it out because I thought maybe that's not the best idea having that travel around with me and could possibly explode at any point. So I'm just trying to use it up and then I can go buy a new one. So we went back into our galley and we're like, right, we need to set out a plan to try and tackle this mess. So we were like, right, first of all, we need to protect ourselves. We put an apron on, put some gloves on, went back to the seat with some cleaning stuff. And we were like, right, let's just get on our hands and knees and just, just sort this out ASAP. We also spoke to the girl who was poorly and made sure that she was okay, made sure she had some water. And she said she was fine. She just had a little bit of travel sickness, that's all. Because it was kind of turbulent, kind of not like it might not have seemed turbulent to us cabin crew who deal with turbulence all the time but to someone who doesn't it might have been really severe for them so it did take a little while to figure out why she was poorly though because we had to use like hand gestures rather than like you know verbal communication because her english was so limited like all of her classmates it was so difficult so she was just like going oh plane moving like that kind of thing so we're like oh okay we got you so we gave her some water and everything and we said to her like if you're feeling better can you help us clean it up <laughs> you know like us english we're terrible we're like we think shouting louder at someone will help and slower will help them understand us better which never works <laughs> don't know why we think that but we still do it anyway so we said to her like if you're feeling better do you want to help us clean it up <laughs> and she was like i don't know <laughs> she did, had no idea what we were saying all she kept saying to us was i don't understand i don't understand which you know I, I felt sorry for her and it was really hard with the situation because we thought maybe a third pair of hands would be more helpful in terms of cleaning this up and because it is like a toxic you know substance i guess i guess better if you know the person who came it from helps us clean it up so then we don't have to be in contact with it for too long you know more hands will just make it easier and because she was feeling better that's why we asked her if she wasn't then we would have not asked her so yeah we were just like right this is going to be hard work because then not only is it cleaning it up it's also figuring out where to put this man because we don't want to put him in a seat that's basically damp and soaking wet that has just been covered in sick Moving on to my face powder, I'm just going to be using this Rimmel Match Perfection that I've just used for years and I'm such a fan of loose powder. My skin being so oily, I just find it totally mattifies my face and stays that way for a long period of time. And this is only like eight or nine pound, I think, for this tub and this lasts me so long. So yeah, I'm yet to find a replacement for this drugstore product. So once we cleaned up the sick, we were then, like I said, put in the situation of what do we do with this gentleman? We can't really make him sit in a seat that has just had tons of someone else's sick on it basically we found about three or four blankets just to try and pad out the whole seat from top to bottom and then we we discussed it and we were like is it really fair to make the man sit in this seat with this girl's you know sick on it even though there's no sick on it the sick was on it so we said right let's speak to the girl and say you sit in this seat with the padded blanket so it'll still be comfy she won't get damp from us cleaning up the sick but because that seat had her sick in it it seemed more fair so we put her in that seat and then the gentleman that told us about it and whose seat it originally was he then sat in the middle seat so yeah that was a really challenging situation to deal with because we faced a lot of them um, well i faced a lot of fears that day <laughs> having to deal with sick and then also having the challenge of you know dealing with a full plane and the other people looking as well and it also didn't smell very good and it was just a very challenging situation and i think throwing myself straight in the deep end was a good thing because my fear of sick is definitely not as bad as it was 
But I definitely still don't like sick, but I can handle it a lot better now because even though that was the first time, it definitely was not the last time that I've had to deal with travel sickness on board of a plane. So moving on to bronzer, as I definitely need to add some colour to these cheeks. So I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. This is in the shade Fair. So on this particular flight I'm talking about, so I'm not going to disclose like the location we were flying to or any details about who the kind of person was that did it. Um, so basically I was doing my regular walks around the cabin just to make sure everyone was okay, make sure everyone had drinks and things. And myself personally, I drink a lot on the plane. I try to drink as much water and fluids as I possibly can to stay hydrated. And because of that, I end up peeing every 20 minutes. Like my bladder is the size of a peanut and because of that, I end up peeing every 20 minutes. So yeah, I had to go for my regular pee break and I walked into the toilet and I was faced with basically shit in a sink. I never thought I'd ever see that in my life and I kind of wish I never did. Because I, I don't actually know who it was that did it. Otherwise, I would have gone to them and said, are you okay? Like, do you need any, like, medication to help potential diarrhea or something? And because of I didn't know who it was, I, I couldn't, you know, you know, go up to them and help them. Because I'm not the kind of person to make a situation embarrassing. Like, I, I'd rather, you know, look after someone and make sure that they're, they're okay rather than say oh my god like did you just poo in a sink like that's just not the kind of person i am and not the kind of per a person cabin crew should be so i don't know what the situation was whether they just couldn't make it to the toilet even though it's you know literally an inch away from the sink i genuinely don't know what happened but apparently this is definitely not the first time it's happened on a flight and unfortunately again i don't think it'll be the last <laughs> The way I dealt with it, because I couldn't, you know, help the person who, you know, it happened to, I was like, right, because I'm dealing with food on this flight, I'm serving passengers food and drink, it's not something I should be cleaning up. So because of that, I ended up just closing the toilet door, locking it, just putting a little sign outside to say out of order. And I just had to leave it, basically. And there wasn't anything I could do about it until the plane landed. And I did, like, let the cleaners know, just say, just said to them, you know, just just be careful when you walk in that toilet. <laughs> and that I'm so sorry. <laughs> and um, that they're always understanding because they know that we serve food and, you know, it's not something that is very hygienic if I did end up cleaning that up. So, so like I said in my previous story, if you ever feel ill, whether that's travel sickness, whether that's out the other end, don't feel embarrassed. Just let us know so we can help you. And also to avoid us having to deal with cleaning up bodily fluids. So moving on to blusher now and also on to my third and my final story of this video and this is the Kiko blusher and this is the magical holiday radiant blush in shade 3 perfect rose and it's such a beautiful blusher. So this final story happened on my last ever flight on the 747 jumbo jet before it was retired. So this flight was to and from Miami. Before I go into this story, I just want to say that I feel so privileged that I was able to be trained and work on the jumbo jet. Not many people can say that in their life who are cabin crew, who work for different airlines. But yeah, like I said, I feel so privileged and I miss that aircraft so, so much. So again, this flight was a night flight home from Miami back to London and I was working in economy again. So on this particular flight, we were flying home from Miami again. So we were flying from Miami to London and this was a night flight again. So I was working in economy and we were boarding and everything was smooth, everything was fine. And everyone sat down, we took off and we started the dinner service. So when we're working in economy, we do tend to have a particular section that we stick to and have a select group of passengers that we are dealing with. It's just a bit nicer, exactly the same as in business. You have like a small number of passengers that you're dealing with. And it's always nice to have the same in economy where you have like a select few passengers that know you well, you know them, you know what they like, what drinks they like, what food they went for. It just helps, you know, build a better connection with passengers. So that's the way we do it. And I had my section, so I was dealing with a fair few families because Miami is like a place that a lot of people tend to go on holiday, like Florida is always a, a very 
big family room. So there was one particular family that I was dealing with when I was serving in economy and they were quite demanding from the start but you know I don't see anything wrong with that I'm quite happy to stay busy and you know keep people happy and if I stay busy it means the flight goes quicker so you know it's a win-win situation. So they were asking for drinks and things, I gave them their dinner and um, you know I left them to it because they were they seemed to be very slow at eating and they were asking for a lot of drinks like in the meantime. So I was like, Do you know what? I'm just gonna give them the experience, you know, give them nice um, amounts of drinks and just keep them happy. So I went up to them maybe half an hour or so after um, everyone else had finished and I went up to them because they were the last ones with their, their meals and I said, you know what, how, how are things getting on? And they were just like, yep, yeah, fine. Like they started to become a little bit at this point and um, I can't remember exactly what they said but they basically made a comment about me rushing them and I said to them like you know I'm, I'm not rushing you I'm quite happy for you to keep your tray as long as you need to because at the end of the day it's just going to go back into a trolley so it makes no difference whether it goes in there now or later on so I was like I'll leave you to it and just let me know when you're finished again like I've said in my previous stories here I um, like to go through every now and again just to, to see if people want to drink, those who are awake on night flights and just do like general rounds of the cabin to make sure everyone is okay. Just quickly but in another story, I am going to do some highlighter now. So I'm using this Fenty Beauty highlighter. This is the Diamond Bomb highlighter in shade How Many Carrots. So I know one of my colleagues actually walked past them earlier on. Um, to see if they had finished their food and they hadn't so they just left them to it again just exactly like I did shortly before and then when I was doing these patrols in the cabin to make sure everyone was okay the lady so that the, I guess the mum was like take my tray so I was like <laughs> uh, uh, uh honey no no you're not talk to me like that. So as soon as she did that to me, I said to myself in my head, right, you need to stay composed, do not rise to her level, just kind of crouch down to her level and just say to her exactly this. And I was so proud of myself when I came out of this because I've never really been the kind of person for, like before this situation to stand up for myself and I was so proud of myself. So yeah, I crouched down to her level and I said, I'm sorry, miss. I don't want you to talk to me like that. I will happily take your tray for you and get you more drinks if you like. However, I would like you to ask me politely and not click your fingers. I will not tolerate you doing that to me. I have been nice to you this whole flight and you do not need to talk to me like that or treat me like that. And I was like, oh damn girl. <laughs> so after this situation happened, I did a lot of self-reflection and I was like, I cannot believe what's just happened and it made me realise exactly why I love doing this job for you know of course the flying and the travelling aspect but at the same time I've gained so many skills and I've gained so much confidence that I would never have reacted like that a year ago prior to the situation happening and she actually I think realised oh yeah that was really rude of me and I should not have spoken to you like that I'm so sorry and she did apologize she was like, I'm I'm really sorry I don't know actually what came over me you know I'm, can you please take my tray and I'd love to have this drink and I'm like yeah, perfect I'm, I'm very happy to go and get you that now like thank you for taking that back and you know thank you for dealing with this situation you know respectfully and maturely so took her tray away got her drinks that she she wanted and again she apologized when I came back and you know we we ended up you know having like a good chat and you know I was finding out a lot about her life and stuff and why she was traveling and yeah I think you know like I said people can be tired there's there's many reasons as to why people can react like that and I have become very understanding of that and not taking people's you know rudeness sometimes to heart I would have done prior to flying but since flying I'm like you know what there's always a reason why someone is like that and sometimes just like you know approaching them about it and just making them realize you know their actions actually is so much better than just getting worked up about it so I'm just going to pop on my mascara so the mascara I'm going to be using is the sky high Maybelline one that was all the trend on TikTok. I tried it and it really did work well like when it's like a fresh bottle but after a while it does doesn't do as good so I need to buy a new one basically 
And I'm also going to pop my lips on, so I'm going to be using the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipstick, and this is in the shade Mannequin. This is the most perfect nude for my skin tone again. So for those of you that are really pale like myself and struggle to find a nude that suits you, try Mannequin. It is perfection and it lasts all day. So that is my makeup done and all of the stories I have to tell for you today about some interesting things that have happened on my flights. They were definitely interesting, weren't they? And I don't know if you guys expected it or not. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like down below to let me know. And also let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do maybe a few more of these videos and spill some more tea about life as cabin crew and the good, the bad and the ugly. Don't forget to subscribe as I'd love to have you around on my channel. And yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon.